This is the Griffin Podcast, episode number 110, The Seller Plan, How to Avoid Negotiation Surprises. Are you a home seller or a home buyer who has questions about buying or selling residential property? Or maybe you're an agent who can't find an easy way to get your answers. Well, then, hey, you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Griffin and the host of the Ask a Griffin podcast. Now, to help you take immediate action to get started in the right direction, you can take advantage of our free step-by-step guides that are waiting for you at griffincourses.com. Whether you're a seller, buyer, or agent, they're all over there, griffincourses.com. All right, let's talk about this. How to avoid a negotiation surprise because that is the worst time to be surprised when you are in the negotiation for your home because you could easily be prepared to avoid a lot of the common traps that people fall into. So the first step here in in considering where do you get surprised? Well, sometimes you've been living in a house for so long that you really don't recognize how much deferred maintenance there really is. You might, but you really don't know how it relates to the competition out there because you are competing. You have your house in a competitive marketplace where buyers have choices. Even when there's thin inventory, they have the choice to do nothing. They don't have to buy your house if it's not going to be in a condition that's acceptable, certainly at the price, offering the features and benefits that it does. So what do you do about all of this deferred maintenance if you don't want to spend the money, you can't spend the money, um, or you just don't want to upset your life that much and it's just an as-is sale? Well, you just look at these major items first. So for example, the roof, if it's a single family house, the, the roof. You look at the heating system. You look at the electrical system. And again, I'm saying this as a a longtime expert. I know during a home inspection, when a buyer's agent gets a home inspector set up and they come and they start to pick apart your listing that I'm representing, I know the major items that could really hurt you. So they're all the major systems of a house. So when you look at those things, that's where you really start because that's a big surprise. And in many um, states that we do business in, but especially Massachusetts, it's common fare in the more suburban parts that a septic system, which is in the ground and you can't see it and you don't know much about it and you don't think much about it unless all of a sudden it bubbles over someday, then you have a serious, serious problem. But for the most part, we don't think about it. But depending on the topography and where it is, that can be a big surprise. So you want to have it tested and get out in front of the repair so that you know exactly how much it'll cost because you don't want that surprise during negotiation because during a negotiation, you might have already said yes to a price. Then you find out that you have a hidden surprise like a septic system, but a roof, new windows, heating system, like I said, electrical, all of that can be seen. And so If you see or sense, and you can always have a a seller home inspection to have somebody tell you how beaten up your house is, I recommended that even to my mother-in-law. I said, listen, have somebody come in and take a full inventory. And then she went through a bullet list of things, improved all those things that she could, and then exposed the rest of them and had herself a good as-is sale. And, And that's how you do it. You're in control of the process. So in the case where there were major deferred items that you, you, you're not going to do, have a licensed professional price them out for replacement and or repair if that's what it needs. Have them priced out. Because when you don't, you're, you're leaving a major question mark as to cost. And costs can vary depending on what market you're in, how hard it is to, to, to get a contractor to come to you, whatever it is you want to. And again, you want to rely on your listing agent, hopefully that your listing agent or their company has resources that they can call upon because builders and home improvement builders uh, typically work uh, hand in hand with good brokerages and brokers. I say good people that are just on the ball, uh, that they're, they're out in front of these issues. So... I always have licensed professionals ready to go to price out all these major items. And because we refer so much business, these people will send somebody out to give us a written, professionally priced, major upgrade um, a proposal. And so we have it. And, and now that helps with a couple of things. If I'm talking to you as your listing agent, I'm saying, look, this is a pretty significant item so that when we compare your house to others, which is never an easy job because there's no such thing as comparable. I don't like that word because everything's different. Um, But we can at least say, oh, they have this already upgraded and we don't. 
So that is going to be one of the demerits per se against that listing that we're dealing with. But we have it priced out. So it's not a guessing game because maybe we beat the competitor on the location. Maybe there are features of the house. As we like to say in this business, it has better bones. It's well built. Um, it sits on the street better. It has a better lot. There could be a, a lot of variables that have you in a, in a better position, but you might have a scary thing like a whole roof to replace or a, a, a heating system to replace. So we want to pr price those out, right? Now, if you price them out and you decide to complete those upgrades, let's go into other things that have a cosmetic aspect to them. Uh, those would be things like the kitchen cabinets and countertops, the bathrooms. Those are typically the things that you hear in real estate all the time. Well, you know, I'm going to upgrade the bathrooms and I'm going to, okay, you're going to do that, but you need some advice before you go and do that, because I have multiple listings over time that I, I, I go in and people have done the upgrades and they say, gee, isn't this great? And I say, not so much because you can't just go and do what you think is appealing. It's not the way this works. You need to talk to people that have experience on what is appealing. And look, when it, whatever in doubt, the idea is just do things in a universally appealing and straightforward way. Right now, I have a seller that I'm helping sell his property. And, and here we go with all of the wonderful things about it. It is in a tremendously wonderful location. It is an old captain's house um, that was built with uh, just phenomenal um, details that you wouldn't find in another house in this area. And, and there have been a lot of improvements, but one of them is a floating kitchen island with a sink in it, and it is in a very awkward place. And we had it tweaked a little bit because we would have to change the plumbing a little bit to really fix it. And, and it just looks strange. And everybody who comes into the house makes a comment on it. So you, you don't want to make improvements without a real, a real opinion. I'm not talking about somebody, oh, it looks great. You know, that's a pat on the back type of thing because you want the listing. No, no. Somebody that is a professional in this business will give you real advice to do things in a universally appealing way so that when somebody comes in, it's a cleansed palette for the next owner so that they can add their colors and whatnot, right? So um, don't do major upgrades that have a cosmetic component unless they're done in a universally appealing way, he said multiple times. Now, why all this matters is the final point here. You see, buyers will tend to almost always overestimate the cost of improvement and may move on to other properties that are already upgraded, even if yours is a better location or better bones. This is what happens because people don't want aggravation. They don't want more anxiety. They don't want more cost after the closing that they can't see or, or plan for it. Nobody likes a surprise. I mean, I'm educating sellers here in the seller plan about how to get out in front of this during a negotiation, but buyers don't want surprises either. So the more of these things during the conditioning or reconditioning phase of preparing for a listing, you, you really have to think about this stuff intelligently. And this is a simple thing to have this priced, do it neutrally if you're going to do it, because the buyers are going to ask you all about this and they're going to question it. And if they keep turning around and going out the door because they're looking at something like a kitchen that's done in a way that's not universally appealing, it's just painful to watch. So really listen to this advice, please. Do things in a universally appealing way if you're going to do them, but don't touch it until you get the opinion. Of, really, a couple opinions would be helpful. Somebody who does home remodeling or kitchen remodeling on a regular basis and, and uh, see what they do for builder specifications or somebody who's flipping houses. Flippers and builders who are smart don't get carried away with their own aesthetic unless it's really high end and they're super artsy and they're very good at it. But I don't recommend that for the everyday home seller. Okay. So remember, this is because you're trying to win during a, ne a negotiation just to get it sold first and then to win because you haven't left all these question marks for the buyer. So I'll reiterate, how you're going to avoid negotiation surprises as a seller falls partly under reconditioning or conditioning. Now, most people don't like to do that. So number one is at least have a licensed professional price out any major deferred items, major deferred items, roof, 
septic system, have that looked at if that's the case for you. And sewer, if you're on sewer, have somebody scope it. Those are all, those two are hidden surprises. So have all of that priced out by a professional if it needs improvement, kitchens, baths. If you're going to do those, then you want to do them in a universally appealing way. And lastly, this is all because the buyers are going to overestimate the cost of this improvement. So get everything priced out at least, okay? So in conclusion, pricing out major deferred upgrades is a crucial step in ensuring a successful home sale negotiation. By having professional estimates and or completing renovations in a simple, appealing style, you can increase the overall value of your home and avoid any unnecessary challenges during the negotiation. All right, remember, you can take immediate action to get started in the right direction or a better direction if you're thinking about selling a home, buying a home, or you're an agent who wants some help. You can all get copies of our free step-by-step guides, our plans. They're all written out. It'll provoke you to at least think and you can come up with a plan that's more tailored towards you, but these are universal steps. We give them away. GriffinCourses.com. You can have instant access digitally, GriffinCourses.com. And if you want a physical copy, there'll be a way to mail them um, or order them and we'll mail them to you, okay? Hey, we post all this content on YouTube. So we'd love the support over there. Go find us at The Griffin. You'll see it. It's a big black um, logo that says The Griffin. Subscribe over there if you like this kind of stuff or somebody who needs it, send them that way. And of course, you can subscribe to the podcast if you're just a listener. If you like to listen, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen, we're there. But remember this, nobody's coming for you. So take action and get to work on a plan for buying or selling a home or becoming a successful real estate agent. And we'll see you in the next episode to help you do just that. Thanks.